Hey y'all, let's cover lesson 30, Introduction to Proportion. This is going to be a little bit of a longer video. This is this is quite a bit of notes on this, so bear with me. A proportion is a statement that equates two ratios or rates. And the proportion is read uh, one is to three as for this one, one is to three as two is to six. So the numbers in the proportion are called the terms of the proportion and are named in the natural manner. So the first term is one, the second term is three, the third term is two, and the fourth term is six. The first and fourth terms are called the first and the fourth terms are called the extremes. And the second and third terms are called the means. Right. So in the proportion A is to B as C is to D, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. This is the words that I try my best to avoid with the student population. Um, we usually use a technique called cross multiplication. So this is A times D is equal to C times B. So we usually call this, this cross multiplication. To solve or verify proportions, it's the only time you can use cross multiplications is when you're, you've got one set of fractions equal to another set of fractions. Okay, that's the only time. There can't be anything else involved. So this is the one time we get to do this without possibly getting it wrong. So two is to three at seven is to 12. We can just cross multiply those to see if they if they're verified and to see if they're a proportion. If if it, the, they, the two equal each other, then it's a proportion. So I'm gonna go two times 12 should be, we're gonna ask, should be equal to three times seven. If it is, then it's a proportion. 2 times 12 is 24. Is that equal to 3 times 7? 21, no. So this is 2 to, two to 3. Uh, 2 thirds is not a proportion to 7 twelfths. Not a proportion. Okay. Let's do, you try this one. Pause the video and attempt this one yourself and then come back and see if, if you lined up with me. Okay, so... I'm going to check the proportion, 4 times 27, and to see if it's equal to 12 times 9. 4 times 27, work it out, I guess, 27 times 4 is 108. Is that equal to 12 times 9? 108, yes, it is. So therefore, this is a valid proportion. Okay, pause the, video and, and pause the video and attempt this next one to see if they are proportioned. Four is to three as 16 is to 11. So four times 11, is it equal to 16 times three? Four times 11 is 44. 16 times three is 48. They are not, so this is not a proportion. Or not a valid a valid proportion, not a valid proportion, okay? Right. Um, solve the proportion for X. Okay, I'm gonna do this next one, and then I want you to pause the video and at least attempt this next one yourself. Okay, I'm gonna do this one first though. So I'm gonna set them up three times 12. Ooh, this is the problem because we have an X here. So maybe I should just use the dot for multiplication. Is that equal to uh, X times four? Three times 12 is 36, equal to four times X is, 40, is four X. And then I just need to solve for X, divide both sides by four. And X is equal to nine. So if X is nine, it will be a valid proportion. 
All right? So x equals nine is our answer. So this next one, pause the video, do set up the same way, and then come back and see how it, how it turned out. Three times n is equal to 24 times two, and we're gonna solve for n. 3n is equal to 24 times two is 48. Solving for n, three is attached by it to n by multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm gonna divide both sides by three. And n is equal to 48 divided by three is 16. Okay. Solve the proportion for x. I think that's 2x. I'm gonna rewrite this. 2x plus one over 15 is equal to one third. So you can do this one the same way. Set it up the same way we did the other one. Pause the video, attempt this one yourself, and then come back to see how you did. Okay, 2x plus one times three is equal to one times 15. I didn't want to put a dot there because then most people don't remember to distribute. We need to distribute this over the binomial. Three times two x is six x. Three times one is three. One times 15 is 15. We're solving for x. I'm gonna subtract three from both sides. Six x is equal to 12. Six is attached to x by multiplication. We have to divide both sides by six. And x is equal to two. If five oranges cost $1.15, what will be the cost for 15 oranges assuming an equal rate? Okay. Um, if we always put a price over quantity. So $1.15 for five oranges, and we want to know what would be the price for 15 oranges, assuming that the rates are equal. Once now this is set up, I want you to pause the video and attempt this one yourself and then come back and see if you got it right. So $1.15 times 15 is five times X, five X. $1.15 times 15, 1.15 times 15 oops, is 17 and a quarter. Let me get rid of my dollar sign for a minute and divide both sides by five. X is equal to 345. So they will cost don't forget your dollar sign, that's your unit, $3.45. That's your answer. Okay. Note, when setting up a proportion, check to make sure that both your numerators have the same, numerators have the same unit. Like in that last one, they both had dollars, and then the denominators and both denominators have the same unit. Quantity was our unit for, or well, what was it? I've forgotten already. Uh, yeah, we had dollars over quantity. So the oranges was our quantity. All right. Dylan and David are planning a backpacking trip to Yosemite National Park. Cool. On their map, the legend indicates that 1.2 centimeters represents two miles. How long is their trip? How long is their trip if the route measures? Let's go with if the route measures 10.6 centimeters on the map. So we want we want to have um, centimeters over miles. Could we go the other direction? Of course we could, of course we could. It could go either way. So I'm gonna put 1.2 centimeters over two miles. And now whenever I do the other side, it has to be centimeters over miles. And they're giving me centimeters, so 10.6. And I wanna know how many miles so I'm gonna make that an M this time, all right? Um, we're gonna do the same thing. So cross multiply this, solve for M and see what, what you get and make sure you round your answer to the nearest 10th of a mile and then verify your answer. Make sure and put it in sentence form. So pause your video, do that and then come back and see how you did. 1.2 times M 
is equal to 10.6 times 2. So 1.2m, I'm going to go ahead and multiply these out. 10.6 uh, times 2 is 21.2. Solving for m, I'm just going to divide both sides by 1.2. We'll find our miles. Divide by 1.2. And I got 17.6 continuous. Just keeps going, okay? Um, but I need to round this to the nearest tenth of a mile. So this is my rounding digit. This six is my test digit. It is greater than five, so I'm going to add one to this one and get rid of the rest of this. So how long is their trip? Their trip is 17.7 miles. Here's my answer. Uh, about, it's not exact. A recipe making two dozen cookies requires one and three quarter cups of flour, among other ingredients. If the baker wishes to make twice that number of cookies, how much flour is required? Well, let's have um, cookies over flour. Let's do cookies over flour. And if we do that, we've got two dozen cookies. uses one and three quarter cups of flour. And we're gonna to try to set that equal to, we want twice as many, twice that number of cookies. So two times two is four dozen. And we wanna know how much flour, X flour. So I'm gonna go two times X and one and three quarters times four and solve for X. Pause the video, attempt this yourself just to see you know, how you're doing, and then come back and check your, check your math. So two times X is two X equals four times one and three quarters. All right, I'm gonna go around the world with this guy. So this is two X is equal to four times, four times one is four plus three is seven fourths. And this is over one, so I can reduce this fours would be gone. So this would be 2x is equal to 7. If you didn't do that, you would have had 28 over 4, which is fine, um, which you could reduce to 7 as well. And now we're going to divide by 2 on both sides, and we get that x is equal to what? x is equal to 7 halves, but that doesn't make sense. We need to know how many cups of flour that is. So we're going to have to change that to a mixed number to find out, because that makes that makes more sense because our other one was a mixed number. When you're when you're baking, you're not going to go, oh, I need to make seven halves. Well, actually, I probably would because if I'm using a, a a half measuring cup to cook, then I'm going to do seven of them. But who wants to do that? So let's just convert this to a mixed number, two into seven. Remember, two you put seven divided by two in your calculator, and you're going to get a three, and then three times two is six, and you're left with one. So that's three and one half cups of flour is what we need. Okay. All right. If two or more objects have the same shape, but different sizes, we say they are similar. Uh, two triangles have the same, that have the same shared, oh Lord, I don't know whether ratio, probably be a good way to do that, the same ratio, uh, are similar when their corresponding sides are proportional or have the same ratio. That's what I was trying to get to. The triangles below are similar, okay, because they're telling us they are. We don't know that unless they tell us. So since that's the case, um, C is to F as A is to D as B is to C, or you could write it the other way around. Um, that's an E, B is to E. Yep, there it is. A is to D, A is to D, as B is to E, as C is to F. So side A corresponds to side D, and there's our ratio. Side B corresponds to side E, there's our ratio. And side C corresponds with side F. We have a ratio there for it as well. So if we look at these two triangles below are similar, and they want us to find F. So they want us to stop, find the side that is proportional to this side. Now, do I have to use all of them? No, 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 you do not. Um, 
I'm going to choose either this one to this one or this one to this one. It doesn't matter which one I choose. I just know I'm going to need an X is to five as whichever one. I'm going to choose the 24 and the six as 24 is to six. And I'm going to solve that. Okay. All right. So how do I want to do this next? Well, I can reduce 24 and six or I can just cross multiply and be done. Um, X times six is six X and then 24 times five. So six X is equal to, what is that? 20, 120, okay. And then divide both sides by six. So X is equal to 20 is what this side is. The width and height of two video clips are proportional. Find the height and pixels of the larger video window. Okay, so we've got, they're saying that these are proportional. So H is to 120 as 320 is to 160. So H is to 120 as 320 is to 160. Whoever you choose, whichever side you choose to do first is the side you have to do first on this side as well. So because I started with this photo, this video first, I use this H. That means that I have to start with the width as well um, for the on the left side, on the right side. So I'm going to cross multiply. Uh, 160 times H is equal to 320 times 120. I'm whipping out a calculator on this bad boy because I have no clue what that is. Uh, 320 times 120 is 38,400. And then I'm dividing both sides by 160 because I'm solving for H. So I'm dividing that by 160. And I got 240. So the height is 240 pixels. Pixels is my unit, so that has to be referenced. Okay. That's it for 30. Uh, let me know what questions you have, and I'll see you in the next video.